and child themes. And I'll tell you more about how we're gonna get there as we go through, but first a little bit about me, just to get it out of the way. Been a WordPress developer for eight years, a front-end developer for even longer. Yes, I remember Browser Wars. I remember when JavaScript was the evil. I'm also a huge nerd, as you will see in these slides, and forgive me, right now, they're somewhat animated. And you can also find me on Twitter. Just as a quick disclaimer, this presentation may not convey best practices accepted by WordPress. Use it at your own risk. There has been some controversy about this, I'm not going to lie, but hey, it's fun. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Is the first thing I should do. All right. That's okay. All right, can everybody hear me now? Yes. Awesome. All right, I'll try to re remember to use my inside voice on the mic. Um, that fine print there says, Carrie Dills might kill me later for this. <laughs> <laughs> so what are grandchild themes? Well, they're something that can be used with inside of frameworks like Genesis. Um, there's a couple of other theme frameworks floating around out there. Um, you could think of like Divi and maybe Avada as a framework, even though they're just really themes. Um, they might come with really great child themes, but you need to have a little bit more control or you're going to be handing this off to, let's say, complete WP beginners, and you may not have a whole lot of time for education at the very end of developing a site. Um, or you may be handing this off to somebody who doesn't heck have a heck of a lot of time or you don't have a heck of a lot of time. So what are they good for? Future proofing. Uh, let's say somewhere down the line your child theme gets updated. You've made a bunch of changes to the wonderful page templates that are inside of it and you go in or your client goes in and makes an update, all those changes are gone because they updated the child theme at the same time, which does happen, I've seen it. Um, even outside of Genesis, when you, you got the separate child theme that comes with your wonderful parent theme, but especially in, inside of Genesis, it's a child theme already. What do you do? So this will help with future proofing. It also keeps it easy and organized. Kind of in the same, you can keep the same hierarchy as a theme, you know where everything is, you don't have to go hunting through uh, Genesis UI, trying to figure out where do I copy and paste that CSS code again? Where do I put it exactly? Where is that Google Analytics code? I can't remember. Oh, okay. I put it in a grandchild theme. Now I know right where it is. Some crash proofing, only so much. Let's say the entire site crashes, something happens to the database, something happens to the child theme itself. So your client calls you up frantic. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? The site's down, the site's down. Well, I have my grandchild theme, we have your child theme, we have some of your content. Let's get you back up really quick. Um, another great thing for use of grandchild themes is items can get lost in the UI for, undevelop for unfamiliar developers or beginners. I know it took me, I don't know, a couple of days to get comfortable inside of the Genesis UI when I first started out. Like, as I was saying earlier, where did this go? I've got the CSS code, but I'm not really sure where this goes. I'm putting this here, but it's not really working. What the heck? So what are grandchild themes? Well, they're really, they're really plugins. <laughs> um, the great thing with plugins, as most of us may or may not know, is that you can on queue and DQ JS and CSS with ease. So let's say there is a JS file inside of your child theme that you just cannot get rid of or you don't want to load at all. With a grandchild theme, you can DQ that. You can also DQ the CSS if you've written your own. Let's say you really, really, really like Bourbon or Bootstrap and you've written some CSS with SAS and you run it through Grant and you've got this wonderful style sheet that you want to put onto the website that doesn't actually fit in necessarily with the grandchild theme or you're just going to replace it. You can DQ it. You can on-queue your own. You can also add in new page templates. Yeah, you could do that with child themes too, but here you can actually uh, with grandchild themes, you can actually take the whole page template that comes with your child theme, craft it the way you want, name it the same thing, add it back in with the grandchild themes, and it'll, over, it'll overrule it. So basically, like child themes work right now, your grandchild theme file will work the same. So the next part is time for code. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay.
Yes, that is a contra code. <laughs> that just shows you how much of a nerd I am. Can I, let's see. I, I'm a user of uh, Sublime Text as my ID. And now you get to see my notes. Give me just a second. So I've written up a really quick CSS. I'm just changing the site title here. This is just for an example. You guys can go whole hog on whatever you want to do. But this is our grandchild theme. Looks just like a plugin. You'd write it the same way as a plugin. You're calling in your CSS, you're loading in your styles, but the really cool part is this one. That's where you're actually calling in your new page template to override the other one. And this would all be inside of your plugin directory setup. Does anybody want me to walk through writing this from scratch? Yeah, one. <laughs> Two? Okay. Yeah, we have enough time. I, you know, the first was just like talky talky. I figured the rest would be like code. So, always, always. So, plugin files always start off with an opening PHP tag. Always. Uh, this isn't very difficult. So, we can go on to the next part. They don't have a closing PHP tag. They don't have a closing PHP tag. I, I was going to get that to that at the end, but they don't have a closing PHP tag. So, the next section, if that's in the slash asterisk, is the instructions that you need to give WordPress to let it know that this is a plugin. You probably, you can see this inside of all the other plugins you've ever installed on your WordPress site. Uh, the basics are you give it a name, you, give, you tell it what the URI is, you give it a good description, author, version, author URI, not needed. Um, description will just help you. Plugin name, plugin URI, probably good ideas. So these next two are basically adding in the actions that will load our CSS that we're writing functions for in just a minute to tell it what to do, where to find the CSS file and how to load it. Um, the first one is uh, WP head, which is basically adding in, telling it that, hey, we're gonna put this in the headers um, on our pages, and then the init is just um, going to be the commands actually adding the CSS and on queuing it. Yeah. Your, um, so I don't use Genesis a whole lot, so um, I'm assuming Fruity Pro was a child thing to begin with? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, Foodie Pro, Executive Pro, a couple of others. Okay. Um, yeah, they're, they're child themes that Studio Press puts out directly, okay. and you can purchase through them. I'm using them because I have, I'm actually doing this for Executive Pro, and uh, I have that already installed. Okay. So this next line is uh, add filter, and there's a bunch of different filters where you could actually use the, do this. Um, each one is basically the same thing, where it says archive te underscore template. You could use page underscore template, um, post underscore template. There's a bunch of these filters that are pretty much on the codex. I can pull up a link for anybody who needs it afterwards. Um, then the next part is the kind of hinky bit, which is why I had the disclaimer on the, on the first part. Um, you're going to then create this blank function that's going to return that page back in. So that's how it's loading the new archive.php for you that you've built. This next line is actually on queuing the style that we're naming it in grandchild underscore style in the next step. And then lastly, we're bringing, we're actually registering the grandchild style. Um, I have it saved under CSS slash style.css. Um, this is adding in a timestamp uh, just to kind of um, hacker proof this a little bit. So if they're trying to inject a CSS that doesn't actually have a timestamp, this function will toss it out. 
it's just a little kinkiness, but you know, we, we try. So all of this wrapped together, when you're done, you're going to, and no closing PHP tags. I cannot say this enough, no closing PHP tags. When you're all done with this, you're going to save it as a PHP fi file. I've called it grandchild.php. And I have lost all control of my Mac, there we go. And then in whatever, you know, whatever system you're using, whether it's a Mac or it's a PC, um, you're going to take your, your new uh, file, your PHP file that you just wrote, it, hopefully it's in its own folder, and then you're just going to compress that folder so that you have your CSS wherever you said your CSS was, your JavaScript wherever you said your JavaScript was, and your page templates should be in the same um, root directory of your, your plugin. You're, gonna, you're then going to make this into a zip so that you can get it onto your site. And that's different in PC. You would right-click and send to compressed file. On Mac, you would just right-click and do compress. So once that's all set, you would just normally go to your site. What was in the CSS folder? Just that really quick, C that really quick style that I showed you when I first started up. I'll show it to you again. It's just changing the site, the site title. And that's the file you'd actually add your CSS to to make all of your changes. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Right. And I'm in my net, my admin. There we go. So you would upload it and install it the normal way that you would. Um, I'm not going to show you on mine because I run a multi-site for my own site, so that could get really confusing really fast for some of you. But then you would just activate it inside of your plugins, and I have mine here. Can you all see that, or is it really tiny? <laughs> there has that. That's much better. So you see, I'm going to quickly deactivate it so that you can see the difference. And I've just thrown this really quick little demo site together. The content didn't come in on the import, but that's okay. So here we see Las Vegas demo, kind of dullish black color, can't really see it all that well. We believe you though. It's there, yeah. it, it truly is, it's there. So now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna go ahead and activate that plugin again. Now this has the Executive Pro already running, so there's a child theme already going. Now I'm gonna activate this. It's gonna say, yay, plugin activated. Give it a quick refresh, and voila, our site title is now red because it's loading in the CSS. Um, one thing to remember, there's actual possibilities when you're loading your CSS to declare in what order, like if you put a zero at the end with a comma and a zero, when you're um, trying to unqueue it, you can actually force it to come in before your theme, so don't do that because you want it to come in after your theme. So don't, don't use any kind of order here because you want to make sure that it comes in after your theme files. And that means after Genesis and after Executive Pro. So you've got two themes you have to worry about there. So when next developer takes over and tries to do the child theme, well, I mean, the next developer that takes over, let's say you, they walk in and they update Executive Pro thinking, okay, well, this needs to be updated. They're probably going to shake and quiver in their boots thinking, oh my gosh, this red coloring, this CSS, this is going to just go away when I update this. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But when they do so, and then the site still stays the same, they're going to think that a miracle occurred. Well, it's because this plugin was running and nothing necessarily happened. That allowed for the child thing to be updated in the background and to keep all of your lovely changes in the foreground and keep running. Now, this is also great for when, let's say, um, the child theme files actually get updated, updated and let's say there's some deprecated functions that happens and it totally like tosses out your page templates. Well the great thing is is that you don't have to worry about necessarily troubleshooting where that might be occurring. You just go in and you deactivate your, your, child, your grandchild theme plugin and there's no more worries. You may have lost some of your customizations but your site will be back up and you don't have to worry about trying to figure out oh my gosh where did it break. You can figure that out later. You can get your site back up and running really quickly by just deactivating the plugin if something goes wrong. Were there any questions? So if they change the class name or something like that, the plugin does all the other, right? Right, but that's very seldom going to happen. Um, the site, this class site title is actually WordPress core. 
Um, so I don't think that that's going to change unless they, they change their structure, which we, you would know way ahead of time. And even so, if that doesn't stay the same, then your CSS won't work and you just lose those minor changes. It's not the, the very end of the world. Yes? Do you find that you use this with clients then? Oh, yes. And do you find that your clients get real confused with, okay, why is there a theme in my plugins? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they understand it better than trying to figure out, oh, I can go in and add, where do I add the CSS, or I need to have a new page template. Where do I go in and add that? Or where can I edit a page template? Where do I go in and, and, and do that? Where they understand the CSS file, and I can say, well, you can go in and make the changes of the CSS file here, or you can make a new plugin. I mean, what do you want to do? So I can give them a few options, and they can say, oh, well, I know where that CSS lives. I can just go and edit it really fast and upload it. Great. They're done. Is that the same as doing it in a child theme? That would be the same as doing it in a child theme, but it's not the future proofness, because the child theme, when you update it, will overwrite it. I guess I don't update my child theme, because I'm the one writing them. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. And that's where, I guess, that's where my is. Yeah, that's where it's different. If you're rolling your own child themes, great. You don't have to worry about it ever. Yeah, I use Builder by iThemes. Okay. It creates, it gives you the option to create the child theme, but then once it's created, it's yours. Right. So you're the only one ever making changes. To exactly. When we're talking about this, where a company is producing child themes for a framework, that right. gets a little more intense. Yeah. And so clients will be like, what do I change? Or, oh my god. I do that for builder games. I create child themes that I sell. So it would be if somebody were changing my theme. Right, right. Or let's say you know, like you weren't completely comfortable with Customizer, but you wanted to add different options to your site. You could actually put out some plugins that say, this can do this now if you add this. <laughs> here's a grandchild theme that adds recipes. Or here's a grandchild theme that adds uh, uh, YouTube feeds or you know just anything you can start adding on to your own base theme without coming out with a whole brand new base theme micro transactions awesome sauce any other questions Right. Oh yeah, you can treat it just like any like a regular child theme. You can load up your own functions in there. Um, any kind of snippets that you want to check on from the internet first before you say I'm pulling the trigger and loading this into my own themes, you can put into a plugin and say, okay, well I'm just turning this on really quick. No, nope, I'm turning it off. Or if you want to see if it will even work in such a way, like if you're wanting to roll your own plugin based off of something and you're going to fork it. This would be great for testing, too, because then you can turn these off and on at, at whim. I feel really strange holding this mic in front of my face. I don't know why. <laughs> How does it play with uh, Genesis Dynamic? I do not know that. Okay. Um, this has yes, definitely something I to play with. Yeah. I work with Everyday's Dynamic, so. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Let me know over Twitter. You, you've got my Twitter. They've got my Twitter. Everybody's got my Twitter. Um, so, any other questions? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> do you also create the core functionality plugin separate from this? I usually do that for things like custom post types, just to keep it out of the themes functions, but mm -hmm. kind of just keep it all bundled into one. Uh, with custom post types, yeah, I would I write them separately myself so that I'm introducing them. But you know, as with everything, you can put it inside of a theme. Now, if you're writing them to do things directly with the with the information coming out of this theme, like if there's anything that you want to reuse that's inside of it, I would say this would be the perfect fit for something like that. Or if you just want to make it client dummy proof where they don't have to worry about where is this, you can just call it something really descriptive and say this is the portfolio for Executive Pro. Does anybody need an explanation on child themes? We can, yeah, we can cover that too if you want to talk about child themes. Do you want to know how child themes work if you have that question? Like, why are we even talking about grandchild themes versus child? <laughs> Everybody's got, every, what's the difference? Child and grandchild. So in the hierarchy, you would have something like Genesis starting out, and that's a theme. Next, you would install a grand, uh, child theme for that, Executive Pro, Foodie Pro, any child theme that would work inside of Genesis. That's what they typically are. After that, the next thing down is grandchild themes, which is where this comes in. 
So a Genesis theme, sorry, I'm down. Yeah, okay, no, no that's, cool. that's totally cool. So like, <laughs> Genesis pays all this development money to build this super awesome product. And you could essentially download it and edit that code. You can do whatever you want with it because it's on your server now. Problem comes in, Genesis releases an update, right. wipes out everything you changed on their, on their theme, you're back to square. So you say, oh, I'm gonna create a child theme. The child theme can have the ability to overwrite some of the parent theme's functions. So you say, okay, I, don't li I like everything about this theme, but I don't like this one theme. Create a child theme. Boom, now you can change stuff in there. Some of the other talks have talked about how to change things. But this, which I've never thought about before, this is a very cool idea, it goes one step further. So now you've, been, you've bought Genesis's framework, and they paid a ton of money to develop that. You bought their enterprise theme, and they paid a ton of money to develop that. And you want to change five things. Well, you could essentially go into that child theme and change some of the code there. But the same problem applies. They change that child theme. Now you've wiped out your code, and you're back to square one. But if you go one step further with a grandchild theme, sound like you've got a hashtag grandchild theme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the grandchild theme that lives one step further, which nobody's ever going to update that because you created it from scratch. So somebody code. starts developing child grandchild theme for sale. I gave you that tip. Very concerned that this studio press might push out an update for um, executive pro, and then it's going to override. Yeah. So they don't, do they push out? They don't. In that scenario, they don't normally, but not a whole lot. Well, I mean, Foodie Pro, she she updates up, she updates it quite a bit. I've heard of it happening. Yeah. I mean, it does. No, I asked about Dynamics. Dynamics gets updated. Yeah, I so I haven't worked with Dynamics. I but now I want to. Dynamics. You had a, you had a question back there. It's just a it's just an observation. You you just take the code from the on the child theme, the, the, the example of studio press, you take all the code from the child theme and you make your own child theme, you name it, and then it, there's no chance that it will be overwritten. Um, to me, when, when you start going from parent theme to child theme to grand, you know, it is endless. Yeah, it can it can be, but <laughs> but but here, but but to to address your to address what you're talking about, yes, by all means, you could take the the child theme, completely copy it, and make your own. That may violate your your license. But even bigger point. But yeah. Even bigger point, yes you can. This fits into the hierarchy of I have this, here comes this next, here comes this next. Even if you have copied your own, made it into your own theme, you're still not gonna get the benefits from getting those updates any longer. Okay. So let's say Genesis comes out with an update for Executive Pro. Executive Pro has some really awesome new code in it. You're not going to get those benefits because you've just copied the theme and renamed it into something else and you've lost all those benefits. So having it this way, you still get the benefits of the child theme updating without having to, you know, copy it and make a new one, copy and make a new one, you know, all that replication. If something happens, you turn it on, you turn it off. Why not just add it as an extension to the theme instead of making it a and keeping it within the child, within yeah, the child. Um, well, but what, what happens, though, um, I understand the updates, it really does wipe out. So even if it's in another, it's in another file. That, yeah, that, that's like a gray area. I'm not really sure how stable that is. Yeah. It's a possibility. But I, if I was doing something in production that had a high amount of users, I wouldn't take the chance, to be honest. The only reason I'm asking is because in the WordPress community, the general, general, and I'm sure this is why you said you did the disclaimer, is that style is your theme, and if you're moving now, you're moving your style to your plugin, there yeah. could be a little bit of conflict there. Right, and but you know that also creates the argument, then why is there a functions file in the themes? Yeah. This is true, and why I would, my next question leads to, you can also add a functions file into your plugin. Exactly. So now, maybe your grandchild theme is adding a functionality rather than just style. Right. And it is really a plugin. The style was the easiest thing to show. <laughs> um, 
and you know, de queuing on queuing. Yeah. But that's when you can actually say, okay, I'm leaving the style in the child theme and I'm moving all this functionality into the grandchild theme and it's just and it's not maybe you don't call it a grandchild theme anymore, maybe you call it a specific plugin for that um, theme itself. But it's still it's still a theme plugin. Right. It's still required by it, so I think calling it a grandchild is still applicable. Yes. I wanted to ask a couple things. One, so a child theme, um, it references the parent theme, right, in the CSS file. Right. So um, you're, you're saying create grandchild theme with the uh, using a making tool with the plugin. What if the grandchild theme can't reference like the child theme as the parent theme? That wouldn't work. No, it, it doesn't have any connections to them. The only connections that it has is in the description. I'm saying that it has a connection to it. You change themes. So if I change it'll themes, load that style. yeah, it'll still even load the style. It'll still even load the the page templates. So it's uh, it may not be anything that you want if you're going to be switching out themes a lot. But no, by no, me no. saying, well, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, the way a child theme works is that it references the parent theme, right? So like when, yes. the, when WordPress reads the child theme, it knows you're loading the parent theme. Yes. So. With this, you don't have that. Uh, well, if, there's. If, that would, if, I, if I made another theme that referenced the child theme, that would never work, right? And this is what I'm asking. Yeah, that would never work. Okay, because you can only reference it once. You can only reference the theme. The child themes can only reference parent themes. Okay. That's gonna be, that's they can't reference. Well, they can reference each other. You can say at import. Yeah. So you can reference them that way. You could have even, we probably could have done that here if I had actually in the function I just say, you know, return add import, blah, 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 instead of actually on queuing it. But on queuing it is the best practices way instead of writing it, doing the returning the add import. So my other question was, um, do, you, do you develop like uh, WordPress sites for clients? So Myself, yes. So do you, do you in your, in like professionally, when you're developing a client, do you, you purchase child themes? use child themes as opposed to just a lot of developers who use Jensen's framework to develop their own child theme. They won't use like Jensen's child themes, but I'm asking you, like, do you use child themes a lot? I will not by choice. I mean, I won't use a Genesis child theme by choice. Usually what I come up with is there's a client that already has one because uh -huh. somebody else said, hey, this will be a great idea, which is fine. If it, if it fits that client, I, I'm not saying don't. Um, but this is when I come in and like, okay, you need quick and dirty. This is how much your budget is. This is, I give you a grandchild theme. Okay, so you only use, it, you know, you only use grandchild themes for those instances, but normally you develop your own child theme. Right, or I'll develop my own theme from scratch. Gotcha, okay, cool. Using underscores, I'm going to plug that. <laughs> Any other questions? So you're basically not using it as a development tool as far as an initial project. It's it's more of a when you have to take over for somebody else, and your and now you have a new client who has an existing site that already has a child. Yes, but I would love to actually do it from scratch for a client that says, we're gonna be handing this off to somebody who has no idea, or we're not gonna sign up for a maintenance contract, or we're gonna do this once and walk away, or you know, something where, where it's like, I would love to be able just to say, well, here you go, here's this, and here's your options, turn them on, turn them off. As I was saying, you know, having, having small functionality bits and different plugins that use it, or can be considered grandchild themes? Are you saying do this with this? That can be really helpful for clients who, who don't really understand, but they know their way now around the dashboard enough to cause havoc. Yeah. Very interesting. Any other cool. questions? Yeah, time. Yeah, what, what, ask what me when. What advantages do you see to this approach as opposed to like using something like the custom CSS modeling? Um, so like you can like. You For me, it, fit, it would fit in into my own workflow, workflow yeah. where I'm I'm looking at the site, going, okay, well, here's their styles. I'm just going to write this really quick and sass and spit it out, and I don't have to like sassify their entire theme. I don't have to, you know, write that. I can do it on my own and then just plop this in and say, okay, here's all these changes. It also really helps the clients when they're like, what did you change? Well, here's the plugin. I turn it off. Here's what your site looks like. I turn it back on. Here's all the stuff that changed because a lot of them don't see, they don't understand, and it would take a long, long time to educate the clients, even though it's our responsibility to do so. 
um, to educate them on all the things and how you change them. So having that in my workflow and then just plopping this in, turning this on, saying, here's your changes, there you go. So, so you, you, you get admin access to your clients? They usually have admin ad access before I even walk in the door. Um, I could change that, but they wouldn't be very happy with me. <laughs> so you're, so uh, you mentioned like the text fixer. When you're rolling your own custom theme, are you also using your grandchild plugin? No. Not, in, not unless I have a, a situation like I described where I've got a client I can't educate or they're going to walk away from me or this is, you know, there are so many options that I'm going to do and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So be I haven't. For you, it would be someone like, oh, I want my slider like over here instead of over here. So, <laughs> okay, grandchild plug in. Yeah, or like in the case of, well, we really like this archive template, but could you add a slider to the archive template? Sure. And I would do this. And an accordion. And an accordion. <laughs> Could you? And Oh, the worst, the worst. Could you include animate CSS? The worst <laughs> client request. Could you add bootstrap? Put some foundation on the bootstrap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve, Steve agrees with me back there. <laughs> okay, I clearly may have stepped into the wrong class. Um, so you're talking about grandchild themes within the Genesis framework, which I know very little about. But what about, I mean, the whole concept of using child themes, because I recently asked Kenny, you know, how do you do this? And he asked one of the his meetups, and he's like, well, that's a little bit, so I might be one of those guys that know enough about the dashboard to reach it. Right. Kind of thing. But for those of us that are just kind of buying premium themes, coming out of themes, whatever, what's the basic way to get a handle on it? Because I have enough, like, running out, I'm a little worried that I don't have child themes to be themes, so to speak. So how do you, you know, what's the basic step? Is there something you want to do? I know there's a plugin that creates child themes, and I've seen some stuff about here's a, how you write the code for this. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there, there's, there's, there's a different class. Right? No, there's a, there's a really, and I can't say this enough, this is where I learned child themes, the codex. Okay. This is one of the really, one of the few subjects that the codex touches on that's really in depth and walks you right through it and points you this does this, this does this, this does this. Um, I can't I can't say enough about it to be honest. So that's a good spot. Steve has one. Are, are you doing any kind of customization you see? Um, no, I mean no. Outside of the settings. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Especially now that you know, now that we have the um, the wonder of a customizer, there's a lot of stuff that you don't have to that you don't have to remember. But even so, there might be some stuff in customizer missing. That's where you would need a child theme in order to to make adjustments to a base theme. If you're, if you're, if you're going to the theme files with editors, if you're going to the theme files and changing stuff, that's when you need to know. I'm excited that. Yeah, if you're going into page.php and making changes, that's your first clue that you need a child theme. <laughs> so any WordPress changes? Totally. Nah, because so customized. Side, so it's kind of a, like a myth. You don't do this without a child theme? There, there, there are circum. There, unfortunately, there are circumstances. So we always default to yes, use a child theme. Always, 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 it's we will. Route. It's the safest route. Um, I was going to say something. Oh yeah, themes from like elegant themes, themes from you know Envato. Some of them have options that you can write CSS into. If that fits your needs, great. But like I was saying, you walk into page.php or you walk into header.php and you start making changes. You better start using a child theme. And if you keep track of where you make changes, and even then there's manual ways that you can make those changes, you just have to yeah. copy them and know where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Which I've done that. That much I've done. Yeah, that's where you. That's where you. Yeah, when you start making changes, <laughs> when you start making changes like that, when you're like manually doing it, that's when I start thinking, okay, maybe you need to start getting into something like, you know. I'm sorry, but even some of the Twitter stuff, you know, you like the strip out created by WordPress. And yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. Perfect example of when to use a child. Okay. 
Yeah, unless you can write CSS just to hide it. I mean, that's like my go-to trick. If I can write CSS that says display none on an element, I'm doing it. <laughs> you better believe it. Or if I'm writing, you know, like, oh, I'm taking out the sidebar here and I can't do it any other way, sidebar goes away, I make the whole main content 100%, I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> or just never use sidebars. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yeah.